is glorious, as was described by the devotees who were there. And there will be a upcoming Samadhi ceremony coming in a few days. So look out for that. And uh, pray to Krishna that Krishna bestows his full mercy upon Maharaj. Of course, seeing his life and how he conducted it, it was glorious in all sense of the world. How he interacted with so many people in a very sweet and very yet a very powerful way in Krishna consciousness. And uh, so uh, his legacy will live on in the form of his kirtans and in the hearts of the devotees who were touched by Maharaja's presence and by his enthusiastic Krishna consciousness. His kirtans were uh, just amazing, Maharaj. Like he can go and go and go. I saw something that I never saw before. We go back to the old days when, when the Beatles were here. And when the Beatles were here, and they used to sing, they would always have ambulances outside for women who would scream and faint in ecstasy listening to the Beatles. <laughs> they, <laughs> I mean, they would be carrying these women to a car, you know, in ecstasy listening to the Beatles. The Beatles were very, very powerful. As a, as a you know, as a group of devotees, of, of persons who made, you know, uh, music uh, appealing to all, all people in all ages in all places. But Maharaj, I saw Maharaj do that same thing <laughs> where he was Zelda Kirtan, people would swing in madness. <laughs> I mean, really. I remember I was in Germany and it was a Kirtan Miller, it was back in the year 2009, I believe. And I was uh, going to different periods times and the whole schedule from morning to night. And he was singing. At one point, I was outside. And I could hear it sounded like the roof was coming off and people were, was like, sound like so, something like a, like a fiasco. <laughs> I came in. <laughs> and people were jumping and dancing and screaming and Right, it was just like too much. <laughs> <laughs> and then since then, I was, you know, I, I took the opportunity, in many cases, to associate with him. In third times, we spent so much time together doing children. Uh, I saw that every time, it, and sometimes even before he started, the devotees would get up on, get up ready to dance <laughs> before he started singing. <laughs> I think, Marge, I was playing one of his but, uh, kirtans last night, and like you mentioned, he was starting to warm up. And before he could rock it, people were standing up. He says, not right now, sit down. Don't stand up right now, sit down. <laughs> yeah, I was, that was in my days mellow. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> that was 2020, I was with him. <laughs> yeah, so Maharaj was a, Kirtan stalwart, I mean, he, he put Kirtan back into its original position in the senses, making it so attractive to everyone you know, by his devotion and by his enthusiasm and by his you know, expertise in music also. So we'll obviously we'll continue doing kirtan wherever he is, whether it's in the spiritual world or it's in the material world with Krishna on one of his planets. <laughs> wherever he is, he'll be still doing kirtan. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> okay, so yeah. we'll begin the class. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. In my Bhagavatam, first canto, 15th chapter, text number 10. Padhyasthava Vilmaktu, Padhyasthava Mehakoka Maratik Sake. But yas the rabbi will come, clip the mahadi say come, slide this to charu, carabum, keep a pug, the bayam. Spistum, do kir, taya, tadayo, tatitashu, mukyam. Yas has the old Peter Katasha, we move the case, sir. It is he only who loosened the hair of all the wise of the miscreants who there opened the cluster of your queen's hair, which had been nicely dressed and sanctified for the Rajagiri Sui Secretary, high professional ceremony. At that time, she fell down at the feet of Lord Krishna with tears in her eyes. Queen Draupadi had a beautiful bunch of hair, which was sanctified in the ceremonial function of the Rajasthani sacrifice. But when she was lost in the bed, Dushashana touched her glorified hair to insult her. Draupadi then fell down at the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, and Lord Krishna decided that all the wives of Dushashana and company should have their hair loosened. As a result of the battle of Kurukshetra. Thus, after the battle of Kurukshetra, after all the sons and grandsons of Dhritarashtra died in the battle, all the wives of the family were obliged to loosen their hair as widows. In other words, all the wives of Kuru family became widows because of Dushashana insulting the great devotee of the Lord. The Lord can tolerate insults upon himself. And any miscreant because the father tolerates even insults from the son. But he never tolerates insults upon his devotees. By insulting a great soul, one has to forego all results of pious activities and benedictions. Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapi Tanya in the Bhutale. Swayam Bhupa Kadam Mayam Vadapi Swayam Vadapi Kam. The Maung Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami. Bhutti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pachari Namirvase Sasunya Vari Pasyati Avesi Tarne. Vancha kalpa taru gascha kripa sindhu pae vacha. Paditaram bhavane jo vaishnavi jo namahan namaha. Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nishtyananda. Sri Advaita Gada Hara Sri Bhai Bhakti Vindam. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare. So here we get an a look at the inside nature of the Lord, his heart. His heart is very much inclined to his devotee. In fact, the devotee, the Lord says, I can tolerate any insult to myself. The one who insults or offends my devotee, and then they must pay the price. <laughs> so the Lord the Lord is very dear to his devotees, and the devotees are very dear to the Lord. It's a very intimate and loving relationship. So, therefore, one should be very cautious. Even though one is a devotee, still one doesn't mean that one can take advantage of their position as being a devotee and minimize or insult or offend other devotees. We uh, we understand in the process of bhakti, there are categories of blockages that come by way of the process of devotional service. They come in the class that are called, these are called anarthas. Anarthas means those things that are unwanted, those things that are inauspicious, those things that block our progress in devotional service or even 
first thing that may even destroy our present states is in devotional service. So these four categories are philosophical misconceptions. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, an artist coming by way of pious activities, an artist coming by by way of impious activities and offenses. <clears throat> Now, in making progress in devotional service, we come to different stages. Adal, Strata, Sadhu, Sangha, Bhajana, Kriya, Hanarta, Nivriti, Nishna. When one reaches the stage of Nishna, that means firm faith, one is fixed in devotional service. It is understood that 75% of their Anarthas have been removed. But the 25% generally are the category of offenses. So one can easily commit offenses even on a higher platform, such as Ruchi, Ashakti, Bhava. And it says that even on the platform of love of God, one can still commit an offense. So one has to be very, very aware that offenses are easy to commit. And one should be very careful to avoid committing offenses. There are offenses to the holy name, we recite these offenses every day when we have our morning programs in our temples. And these offenses should be known and avoided so we can make progress in the chanting of the holy name. There are offenses to the Lord, his deity form, which we can we perform in the temple by not behaving properly in front of the deity or acting improperly. Um, or uh, neglecting to perform certain activities that are required. They can also be offenses. Then you have offenses to the chant of the uh, the um, offenses to people in general, uh, like non-devotees. They can also be offended. We should also understand that Krishna is in the heart of the non-devotees. One should not cause any unnecessary distress to anyone, either through body, minds, or words, which can cause one to uh, commit an offense and therefore slow down one's process in devotional service. But the most severe offense is offenses to the Vaishnavas. And so there are six ways to offend the Vaishnava. Um, I'll list them according to severity going down to the lesser. The, the, the greatest offense that one can commit against a Vaishnava is to kill a Vaishnava. That's considered the most serious. The one lesser than that is to blaspheme a Vaishnava, just like we have the example of Daksha, he blasphemed Shiva, and that cost him his head. He had to take the head of a goat and be insulted by, by having a head of a goat. And, um, and then we have offenses that come by way of envy in the vice number. Uh, one should not have any en envy towards others, especially vice numbers. Uh, there's offense that one can commit by becoming angry with the vice number. And then lesser than that, is the offense of not respecting a Vaishnava who is respectable. Of course, all Vaishnava is respectable. So not respecting Vaishnavas is also offense by omission. And then you have the last, the most uh, least severe of all offenses, not feeling happy when you come in contact with a Vaishnava. So sometimes devotees think, well, how do we do that? How, uh, becoming happy is not a, it's something that we can pretend it happens. But it says that if you come in contact with a devotee and you don't feel happy by their presence, then you should immediately say your obeisances and that will counteract any possibility of committing an offense. So these are the six ways given by Srila Bhakti Thakur in his writings on how one can commit offense. So uh, 
therefore one should be very cautious and conscious. They say a devotee is very conscious of Krishna and cautious in the activities of the devotional service. Cautious means to be very attentive to whatever you're doing and not be misled by wrong thoughts or wrong activities or even wrong speech. So one has to learn tolerance, one has to learn patience, one has to learn how to practice the process of Krishna consciousness by developing the quality of humility. All of these things are uh, fundamental to our progress in devotion and service. The qualities of a Vaishnava are the ornaments of the Vaishnava. And they, they help us making progress and the principle of tolerance helps us to avoid committing offenses, even if there is some reason that one should react in an offensive way. Still, one should be very careful not to go down that road. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very diligent in pointing out how, how severe Vaishnava offenses there are. When uh, Gopal Chapala offended Sri Vasnakur, he came down with leprosy. And he had to remove himself from the village and live at the banks of the river because he could not associate with anyone in his leper condition. After sitting there for about a month suffering, Mahaprabhu came walking by he saw Mahaprabhu, he fell at the feet of the Lord and he asked for forgiveness. The Lord told him, what you're suffering now is just the beginning of what you will get. And the Lord didn't want even hear anything and he continued to walk on. Uh, after about three months, the Lord passed by again. This time Gopal Chapala. Chapala was really repentant in heart. And again, prayed for mercy. The Lord gave him mercy by saying, I can't relieve you of the reactions of your offense, but only Sri Vasana Kaur can. So he gave the formula that one offense of Vaishnava, one should, should ask forgiveness, and at the same time, one should be ready to offer service to that Vaishnava in order to show that one is serious about, uh, about being repentant. So, um, yeah, so, and when Mahaprabhu would, uh, sometimes he would make very strong statements in regard to people. He said, anyone who blasphemes a devotee, automatically they're drinking poison. Anyone who glorifies a devotee, they are drinking nectar. He said, if you drink poison, you die. If you drink nectar, you live, you live eternally. So the Lord gave the formula that one should be very uh, careful in the association, even if there's some disagreement, disagreement with the phone between devotees, which is natural, which happens by way of such situations. One should be very careful not to commit an offense based on our disagreements or uh, different ways of seeing things. So we can respect the devotees for the fact that they are devotees. Because when it comes right down to it, our success in Krishna consciousness is association with and a service to the Vaishnava. So if we uh, act properly in that association by always being in the mood of service. So this helps us to overcome the mood of for the possibility of committing offenses, always being in the mood of serving. Here we see Dushashana. He was, he, he had a grudge against the Pandavas. And here was Draupadi, the wife of the Pandavas. So he wanted to take advantage of his anger towards the Pandavas by insulting his wife. But Krishna didn't tolerate it. <clears throat> So Krishna said here, all the wives of the family members who were uh, connected with Dhritarashtra, Dushashana was one of his sons. All of them were mm, 
you know, they the wives were obliged to loosen their hair because it says it says when one becomes a widow, then the wife takes her hair down to indicate that she no longer has a husband. <laughs> and it's a, it's a, also a sign of mourning for the wife for the departed husband. So Krishna became quite angry when he didn't tolerate that. Therefore, he arranged in this battle that all of the sons, 100 sons of Dhritarashtra, where all of them were killed in the battle. And so this is a very poignant example of how the Lord does not tolerate uh, offenses. Of course, Dushashana was not a devotee, but, but even devotees cannot offend other devotees and think because I'm a devotee, I can take liberty to do what I want. It's not, the Lord will, will also make, make it difficult for you to make progress in devotional service. As it says here, all pious acts and benedictions are foregoed because of the offenses of the great soul. <laughs> so we have so many examples in the scriptures. The Rasa Muni offended Maharaj Angarish, and he almost you know, lost his life because of that. <laughs> Krishna gave him a chance, and he took the opportunity to apologize to Ambarish Maharaj. And Maharaj Ambarish, it's just it's also to understand that a Vaishnava who is offended never takes offense. This is an important principle to understand that even though one may be offended, one doesn't hold a grudge against the, the offender. One is usually very forgiving, but still, Krishna is not so forgiving. <laughs> he wants to see how you made a mistake and you have to make proper retribution by uh, humbly apologizing, asking for forgiveness, and will be willing to offer some service on the request of the Vaishnava. <clears throat> so this is uh, Krishna consciousness. Um, therefore, one, in order to avoid all of that, one should be, one should practice Krishna consciousness very consciously. If we are unconscious in our Krishna consciousness, <laughs> In other words, if we do, if we act in a more routine way, not thinking about what we're doing or about what we're going to say, then easily we can commit an offense. Or we may even commit an offense by omission. Just like we have the example of um, Indra Dev. Indra was in a ceremony and he was being worshipped by all of the devas. And his wife, Sachi Devi, was there. It was a grand ceremony in order to worship Indra. And then Brihaspati came into the door. And uh, immediately he stopped by the door. And Indra saw Brihaspati, but he didn't do anything to welcome his spiritual master. So in, uh, Brihaspati saw, oh, Indra is very much proud that of his worshiping, so he, he turned around and left. And then uh, Indra realized that he committed an offense by not honoring or respecting his spiritual master when he appeared within the assembly. And But he tried to make amends, but he could not find Brihaspati. Brihaspati hid himself from Indra. And after that, what happened was the demigod because it became defeated by the demons because they had lost their uh, mercy. They lost the Lord, the Lord's mercy because of the offense to a great soul. So here, even by this offense by omission, also by not acting in a way that one should act, or by acting in a way that one should not act. One by omission and one by activity, There's offenses in both cases. Sometimes devotees ask, well, sometimes I don't even remember if I committed any offenses to devotees. I must have, the devotees think like that. So sometimes one um, will find themselves in that dilemma. 
And one will think, well, what can I do? Well, then the uh, recommendation is that one prays, my dear Lord, somehow or other, I know I've committed offenses to others. Um, I want to please forgive me for those offenses. I apologize for any discretion, transgression I made towards others. And uh, then go on and chant the holy names of the Lord. And then one can be relieved, but one should be very careful not to commit offenses, even unknowingly, knowingly or unknowingly. Okay, and the way to avoid committing offenses, always be in the mood of service, always being in the mood to learn. If you're in the mood of learning, in the mood of serving, then you're always in the best position to gain the mercy of the Lord and make progress in Krishna consciousness. Okay, so we'll stop there. Maharaj, this is a very deep class, and I'm hoping that we'll get a lot of questions because um, it's definitely a, 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 a challenge or practice that as practicing devotees, we always face this uh, question of who we have offended, have we offended, how to not offend, and all the fine lines. So thank you much for such a deep class. Um, would like to ask devotees, I will stop sharing so that... Um, we can go to the gallery and I request devotees, if you can, please turn on your videos so that we can have each other's association and we can see each other. And if there are any questions, please do raise your hand so I can call you in the line, you know, in the order. Marge, as you were speaking, um, I was making notes. Um, as you were speaking, Marge, it, um, I have a question is when, a person is offended. Oh, sorry. When someone offends a, a, a devotee, others know about it and they don't think it's a big deal, but it has really offended, it affected the other person. How does one handle such a situation, Maharaj? Well, can you um, repeat the question? Maybe rephrase yes. it. I, I yes, can get Maharaj. To the, uh, yes. So, um, if a devotee has been offended in the assembly of other devotees witnessing it but still just to make peace you know they say oh it's okay we'll just make peace forget about it but it's a repeated behavior the it's a repeated offensive behavior and still in the assembly of devotees or to the knowledge of devotees and still devotees oh it's okay and so yeah let bygones be bygones but it's not helping the situation because it's a repeated offensive behavior. What does one do in that situation, Marge? When you say, what does one do? What is that position of that one you're talking about? One who is observed? Well, what, what I have come across is that um, it's not helping the person who has offended by not correcting them. At the same time, if others are saying, it's okay, it's okay, just let it go. It's not even helping the person who has made that action. So it's like such a murky water. Like, how do we handle it? Do, do we just say, no, this person cannot go on? Or do we say, no, he has to be corrected? Or do we just say, let bygones be bygones and then support the, that person's offensive behavior? Well, the scriptures give the understanding that if one is offended, one may tolerate and go on, but if one sees others being offended, they should say something. They should say something. And if they don't say something, they also can be implicated in the offense. Too. <laughs> to some degree. So, yeah, uh, it's not mm, allowing people don't want to interfere with the progress of whatever they're doing, so they just let it go on. But if it's obvious, and this is the word that's important, if it's obvious, it's offense. And someone should say something in a very not to offend the person who was the offense, the offender, but to very very carefully point out that this type of behavior or this kind of speech. Is not appropriate for 
is gathering here. In other words, you have to be very sensitive to the uh, to the situation and not create a bigger turmoil by becoming angry and then disrupting the whole mood. So you know, I, your mention of a, a very strong point that reminds me of uh, what Bhakti Tataswami said, and is that if we support it and not do anything about it, then we are also implicated to some extent. I, that was yeah. um, a high, I remember that now, Marge, as you were sharing it. Well, in the, when, when Shiva was offended by Daksha, some people immediately left. Others stayed. So um, that's also a tactic that is used, or an, an expression of a reaction is that one when one sees an offense being committed, they just turn around and they leave immediately. Not to become part of that environment or that assembly. Thank you, Marge. This is um, very, very helpful. I've been having this question for quite some time, and I'm so and kind of knew it, but I just wanted to get the firm answer. I'm so glad that you clarified the doubts in my mind. Thank I you so much. When, I think when people let things go on, is they they're waiting for the senior most person to speak up. And that's the job of that senior senior person in that assembly to say something. Maybe other devotees who are not in that position may feel a little um, awkward speaking up, but someone should speak up. Maybe it's the senior this person should be aware of what's going on. Thank you, March. Yeah, thank you so much, Matt. That's very, it clears my question in my mind that I've been caring for quite some time. Thank you. Any sure. questions from devotees? It's such a deep topic. Um, yes, Sri Devi, go ahead. Thank you, Anusia. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. As Anasiya was speaking, another thought came to mind that in an assembly, when people start speaking philosophical deviations and presenting that as the philosophy, then my understanding is that one must immediately, to protect the innocent, one must immediately take issue and present the correct philosophy given by Srila Prabhupada and not allow deviant philosophies to be presented as the real thing. Is that correct? Yeah, but you know, again, you have to do that in the, in the proper mood, in the proper manner. We're not making it explosive and causing bigger arguments. Uh, yeah, you can do that in, in terms of questioning the person who states, say that we said this, but I understand from Srila Prabhupada's words and his books that uh, what you're saying is uh, not in line with with Vaishnava philosophy. So you have to use the words that are very uh, pleasant to introduce what you want to say rather than getting angry and start firing statements. Of course, sometimes the, you get angry when you hear it. So you have to check that so it doesn't interfere with your ability to speak properly and speak effectively, you might say. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yes, Shulpesh Prabhu, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, I pray for forgiveness every day because I kind of believe the world we're in today, even if you don't want to offend somebody, people will take offense. 
because that's where we are today. You know, we're, we're very sort of sensitive in Kali Yuga that, you know, it's very, very easy to offend somebody. What I wanted to ask is sometimes if maybe I'm not getting along with another devotee, why I feel maybe not uh, respected by another devotee, I start negative thoughts towards them. And I want to stop this trade because I don't think it helps them and it doesn't help me for sure. You can become just caught up in a spiral, even though there's no situation, the mind will create a situation. How do uh, I work with to get to see the, the mind is feeling negative towards a, another person, but you don't want to speak something. Right? Well, as long as you don't speak, there's no offense, but don't allow that thought to stay in the mind. That's the point. Uh, the Bhagavatam explains that in the age of Kali, one does not get punished for wrong thoughts, and one gets rewarded for right thoughts. This is a special concession in this age of Kali because the age is so bad. But still, the point is that if we allow negativity to stay within our mind or in our life, it may, it will definitely come out in one form or another, and then it will be offensive. And so some of you have to ameliorate that, that thought somehow, correct it, or dismiss it. I'm guessing uh, thinking about good good qualities of that yeah, good thing. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah, there's there is a nice statement. I have it on record here. I can't remember the exact quote, but there are those persons who um, let's see, those persons who see. Another person, they only see faults. Okay. So they have not, they're always looking for faults. So that's what they see. They see faults. And then another, another level, higher than that, is the one who sees good qualities and faults side by side. And focuses on the good quality and dismisses the, the faults. And higher than that is to see one's faults, another person's faults as potential good qualities. And uh, another, higher than that is not to see any faults at all, even if there is faults. <laughs> so generally, we're on the platform of seeing faults and good qualities side by side. So we have the choice to be a B or a, a fly. Sorry, Mike, I didn't understand what you meant by a bee or a fly. Bee goes for the honey, a fly goes for the stool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be a bee. Thank you, Maharaj. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Marge, I think there is a question in the chat. Yes. So this is from uh, Mother Gita. She said, Hare Krishna Marge, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada, all glories to you. My sincere apologies for not coming on video due to health challenges. If a devotee is unaware of offending another devotee and the other devotee is very offended, in spite of begging forgiveness many times, the offended devotee does not pardon. Even serving that devotee does not melt the heart. What should be done? <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one, Marge. First, draw on your feet and roll on the ground, which is a way that is understood through scriptures. Um... Maybe try to do something for that devotee that will ameliorate, ameliorate that feeling. Like buy them a gift or something. Um, 
But that's a tough one. Usually Vaishnavas are not like that. But in certain cases, when a vice just like if, uh, if someone's done something to another Vaishnava who is there to that to that to a Vaishnava, that Vaishnava may find it hard to forgive that person because that other person is very dear to them. Easy to, it's more easier to forgive any offenses to yourself. If there's someone dear to you who gets offended, that's that's a little bit harder. So one has to think of different ways to somehow or other pacify that person and uh, make proper amends. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't forgive Gopal Chapala right away. He said he only said only when he went to uh, Sri Vastapura was he was he able to get forgiveness. Maharaj, would you? Um, I'm sorry. Go, uh, uh, go ahead, Namrata. I'll ask my later on. Don't worry. No problem, Mataji. You can go ahead. No, no, please go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna. Um, Gumaj, I wanted to ask, uh, what, how can we work on uh, forgiveness? Um, if, we want, if we want to forgive somebody, we might say uh, externally that we have we want to forgive you or we will we want to forgive so and so person but we haven't forgo uh, forgive them in mind how to work uh, on the level of mind <clears throat> well i remember we had a very extensive discussion on this with senior devotees and there's three three options you can forgive you can forgive and and not forget. Forgive and not forget. You can forgive and forget. Forgive and not forget. And then you can approach the person and work out the situation in a discussion and try to come to some um, some kind of uh, satisfactory feelings amongst both of you. That's the only three options that we have, that one can actually do. So uh, when you forgive and forget, then sometimes you may find yourself again in that difficult situation. Forgive and not forget means not to make, sh make sure you don't go back into that arena again where that offense can also come back again or being aware of that. You forgive the person, but at the same time, you uh, be careful not to, again, interact in such a way that that offense can again Another offense can come. If you can't do any of these things, you have to approach a person and try to discuss it in a very intelligent and very Krishna conscious way. That's all. That's pretty much the alternatives. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gomez. Thank you. Very Krishna. Yes, Sufish Prabhu, go ahead. Uh, Krishna Maharaj, is it appropriate in some situations where you just have to move on? Like, yeah. there's, you have to kind of forgive and not have animosity to a devotee, but, you know, they're on their path and I'm on my path and it's time just to move on, like people come and go in our lives? Moving on means to somehow or other... Um, forgive the situation or, or go on with your life <laughs> with the idea of avoiding that again or maybe even avoiding that association again. Yeah. Mm, that that we do sometimes. But if you don't forgive, you'll carry that with you. And if you carry that with you, it always come back to you many times when you're chanting japa, when you're sitting quietly, when the mind is a little bit relaxed, that feeling will always come again. 
So you have to somehow or other come within your own heart and mind to come to the point of forgiveness. I was giving a class in the manor many years ago. It was a special group that came from the outside. They were devotees from another temple. And uh, we discussed this topic very thoroughly. And at the end, one lady came up to me and uh, she looked quite distressed. And she said, I want to ask you a question. I couldn't ask you openly who I'm going to who help me. I said, what, what is that? She said, well, you know, I have this problem with this one lady and uh, you know, she she offended me and I, I can't forgive her. And I said, well, uh, how long ago was that? And she said, 25 years ago. Now think about that. I practically fell off my diocese and I wasn't so far down, but anyway. I was, uh, all I could say to her is, find ways that you can come up to forgive this. Otherwise, you're carrying that with you. It's, it's making you unhappy. If you're unhappy towards another person, that person may not feel it the same way you feel it. You will feel it more because you're carrying that negativity with you. So forgiveness is actually for the benefit of the forgiver. I find pray, pray really helps in that. If people are finding it difficult to forgive, pray to God. Help me. Yeah, pray, pray gives you strength. Prayer gives you strength. Thank you, my wife. Yeah, there, there are things people do in our lives. There are other people who don't want to associate with devotees because they're afraid to get offended or, or offending other devotees. But that's not the solution either. The solution is to learn how to act in the association of devotees where these things are avoided. So a devotee is friendly to everyone based on respect. We, we sometimes, because of our position and because of our achievements, we have this tendency to think we're in a better position than others or we're better than others. And that's a little dangerous because then there's a there might be a, a chance to commit an offense because of that wrong thought. You think you're not better than others, then you minimize another person's important position, thinking you're better than others. Well, I'll tell one story, maybe they'll answer some of your questions. There was one of my god sisters, she she told this in a public and she went, one day she went down to Chapa Japa, and her Japa was really not like she normally chants. It was very difficult. So she started to reflect, why is my chanting so difficult for me? And she thought, I must have committed an offense to somebody, but she wasn't aware of anything. So she prayed, my dear Lord, if I commit an offense, please Help me to understand who I offended so I could apologize. So the next day, she gets a call from one of her friends who was telling her that this lady over here, she's really angry with you because the way you treated her child. Now, this lady who I was talking about, Mr. devotee, she was a teacher in the school. So actually, so according to this other lady, she didn't. She mistreated her her child, so she was angry about it. And so then she called the lady and apologized, and then everything went back to normal, and she was able to chat.
So sometimes we just don't know. Maharaj, there's a question in the chat by, Ma uh, by Mother Gita. She said, Maharaj, if the devotee is unaware of the offense committed and the offended devotee does not want to talk about it, does that mean the offender has to still face reactions? Even after begging forgiveness, will the spiritual life be affected? If you take a nail and you hammer it into the wood, and then you pull the nail out, what do you have left? Hmm? The, the, the scar, the hole. The hole in the wood, yeah. So, mm -hmm. and you commit an offense, even if you become forgiven, there is always that little scar that you're used to somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can be forgiven 100%, but if the devotee doesn't want to talk about it for whatever reason, mm -hmm. I won't mention any names, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you how severe offenses can be. There was one devotee, he would keep track of the activities of all the senior devotees, and he would, he would, make criticisms about their behavior. He made a program out of it. And he would, you know, publicize what he thought was a deviation from many senior devotees. And the devotees were getting really disturbed with this man. So they threw him out of the local temple where he was living and he couldn't come to the temple. Now the man, it's this devotee, he was very intelligent, super intelligent, but he used his intelligence to find fault with senior devotees. So then when the COVID virus came, he got COVID and the devotees came to try to help him. So they helped him and they cured him from COVID. But then the second time he got it again. And even though the devotees tried to help him, they couldn't and he died. Yeah, this was just recent, within the last year. So he got the reaction for his offenses. And nobody could change his mind. We, everyone who was offended never said anything, but those who were seeing what he was doing was trying to stop him. He, he was incorrigible. He wasn't correct. Mm -hmm. He went on thinking that he's you know, doing a service by pointing out all of these defects of the senior devotees. So, you know, uh, Krishna doesn't tolerate it. That is deep, Maharaj. Yeah, I won't mention any names. That is deep. Because I, I know of one like that, and it's just so sad. I do know of someone like that. It's so scary. It's so scary. But it's yeah, so sad. Careful. Yeah. I mean, there is rectification, but if you don't, if you don't go through with it, then um, it stays with you. And, and I, there's another example is that when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was here, when there was a fence to Gopal Chakravarti, when there was a fence to Srila Haridas Thakur, both offenders immediately came down with leprosy and had to suffer in leprosy because of that. Um, now, it's understood that that's the reaction for committing offense to a great soul. So sometimes devotees think, mistakenly think, that, uh, well, I've committed offenses against devotees. I don't have any leprosy. <laughs> I'm not getting any, the things are going on. But the difference is that when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was here, he speeded up, this is important, he speeded up the reactions of devotion to Krishna 
and who speeded up the reactions of offenses to Vaishnava. In other words, by his presence, people got immediately love of God if they pleased the Lord. And by his presence, people got immediately reactions for their offenses to the devotees by getting disease. But these things are still there, but they're not immediate. They may, they might, a person will still get the reactions, but they may not come in an immediate way. So that's why sometimes a person will continue to commit offenses, and then at one point, it'll cash in. And don't yeah. listen, just don't listen to it. I mean, there's a, there are many, uh, what we call social medias that people use for, for offenses. Social medias, I don't go on them, but I hear from other devotees that are full of offenses. Devotees criticizing other devotees on the social media. Just stay away from them. Don't even listen to it. Mm -hmm. Don't try to, try to correct it. Just turn it off. It's poison. It's poison. Marja, I have a question about um, uh, just uh, piggybacking from Namrata's question. We've heard forgive, but don't forget. How does the devotee try, you know, I, if we don't forget, it's like saying that, you know, you've hurt me. I don't want to be in it twice or three times, you know, as they once bit and twice shy. But doesn't that affect the sincerity of the of the relationship, Maharaj? Like, yeah. in terms of being yeah. honest? Yeah. Well, you just have to make sure you don't fall into that same pattern that the offense was committed before you. If you see it coming, then you can avoid it. But if you say forgive and forget, that means you're, you're more likely to, to fall into this, the same pattern again, either with that same person or possibly with another person. So, yeah, you have to forgive because we also say, well, I make mistakes and therefore I should, you know, we want to be forgiven because we make mistakes. So should, we should be that in the same way towards others. But that doesn't mean we should be foolish enough to allow ourselves to, to fall into that same pattern where there's another offense committed. So, yeah, just see that ahead of time. Sometimes you have to distance yourself from that person or you have to distance yourself from that environment which facilitated that offense. Or be aware and be aware of that. So the, the, uh, the philosophy of forgive and not forget marriage is that even though it will affect the sincerity of the relationship, it's still not going to go, it will not go against us. Like for me, if I forgive someone, but I don't want to be, but I will not forget because I don't want to be thrown into that, that same situation again. And knowing that it's going to affect the the sincerity or the depth of the, of the, of the relationship, but will that, uh, will I be held, you know, um, responsible for, you know, in a wrong way for not having a sincere relationship, Maharaj? Well, you're actually you're actually doing benefit to the other person by not allowing them to commit another offense. When you're when you're avoiding situations, you're also helping that other person to avoid making the same mistake in offense. Well, yeah, you might find that that's why there's the third option that I also mentioned, and that is to discuss it. So you keep the relationship nice. Try to discuss it in a very intelligent, very Krishna conscious way. 
well, this is the situation, and uh, I want to know why you feel like that, and what is it about me that causes you to act like this, or speak like this? Um, Marge, that's another question. This is a really deep question topic, Marge. There's a question here from Dear Krishna. Hare Krishna Marj, please accept my humble obeisances. All go to show proper all glories to you. If we just forgive, but also forget the offensive party until corrected, in general starts abusing the relationship. Is that the correct understanding? Oh, wait a minute. I'm not sure I got it. Yeah, I'm trying to understand his question too. Um, he said, if we just forgive, but also forget the offensive party until corrected in general starts abusing the re relationship. Is that the correct understanding? Dear Krishna, are you able to clarify your question, Prabhu? We don't recommend that. That that, we, that That's an old saying, forgive and forget. That, that, that way is not recommended. <laughs> There are people who who like to do that, but you're opening yourself up to you know getting offended again, or you're up, up open yourself up to an unpleasant situation. But that person has to do something to rectify themselves; otherwise, they can be can, can continue to commit offenses. And Marge, I, I, I think that forgive and forget concept is very unhealthy. Um, I, I feel that it's very unhealthy and it's not real. Is that? Yeah, that's the yeah that's that's the conclusion in our discussions that we had. Mm -hmm. Something we that's not an option we usually take, but it's an option. <laughs> <laughs> Prem Kishori will will come to you once Maharaj comes back. Yeah. Go ahead, Prem Kishori, with your question. Okay. Thank you so much. Hi, Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. August to Prabhupada, and August to you. Sorry, I'm driving. Um, thank you for the nice class. Uh, Maharaj, um, my question is the party who is offended. And that party goes on to tell the world that I am offended by this particular person in this particular way. So are they also now committing an offense to the offender? Um, um, it's a good question. Uh, it depends if they do it confidentially with someone, someone who is close to them just to get some amelioration from the effects of the offense. I don't think so, but if they want to broadcast it so that other people will become the enemy of that person who offended them, then yeah, then that is offensive. Thank you, Manj. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, but I, I do thank you. It is clear at a small level, but if it was real, let's say that there was a real thing, let's say there's this child abuse case or some kind of an abuse, and now the devotees want these. I'm talking at a larger level. At a smaller individual level, yes, I'm very clear. Uh, but at a larger level, let's say that a person has committed an offense at a very huge level, like a lot of devotees are affected. And the senior devotees want them to tell it, speak about it, so something can be done. But now people will not talk because they say, oh, we are going to now commit a counter offense by singing the glories of the offense, uh, if I'm making myself clear. Yeah, that's also correct. Yeah, that's also now, if the person has committed a great, I mean, then great offense, then they have to go through the process of retribution. 
Apichet Sudaracharo, Bajate Marnananya Bhak, Sadaweva Samanta Vyak, Vayavya. Even if one commits the most abominable activity, if he's engaged in devotional service, he is considered to be saintly. So that verse is a very powerful verse. So even if someone has done something really horrible, you see what Jagai and Madai did, but still they they would they apologized and the Lord forgave them and they became Vaishnavas. So the, there's only two things, two things that that person has to do. He has to humbly, sincerely uh, make amends to the persons they he offended, pray for forgiveness, ask for some retribution or some some service he can do to show that, and at the same time, uh, get back into devotional service. Because in the power of devotional service will allow that person to continue. Because devotional service is so powerful. So we have many examples of that. But without the retribution part, one cannot exactly go back in devotional service in the in the proper consciousness. They have to, they have to make a retribution. And then they should be forgiven and allowed to come back. But some people don't want to do that. There's a nice dialogue given by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur between Krishna and Arjuna, uh, the Arjuna of, of, the, of Kurukshetra, where Arjuna is speaking to Krishna. I wish I had the book with me. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's written in Shiva Ram Maharaj's latest book, um, Vilapa Kusum Manjali, right at the very beginning. It's a dialogue created by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. And uh, Krishna is saying, yeah, my devotee is saintly. Because, but Arjuna said, well, but look what he did. It was so horrible. It doesn't matter. He's come back to me in devotional service, therefore he's saintly. And then Krishna really gets strong at the end and says, I want to run into the assembly of all the demigods and declare my devotee will never be vanquished. And so Krishna is willing to forgive if the devotee goes back into devotional service fully and at the same time does whatever is required to make retribution for the offense that they made. That means they may have to accept a little punishment. They may have to accept some, some marginalization. But still, if they do all of that, and still people don't forgive them, then they are not uh, they are not understanding the heart of the Lord. That's there. You can read the dialogue. If you have that book, it's in the very beginning of the book, around page 39 or something like that. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. So, yeah, usually those who cannot be cannot forgive others for what they've done, that means there's something wrong in their 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 life is not good either. They've been abused, they've been offended, or they've been offenders also, whatever. Paj, what is the name of the book, if I may please ask again? It's the, well, it's just, you can probably find the dialogue separate from the book. Uh -huh. Vishwar Chakravarti Thakur is, is presenting this dialogue between Krishna and Arjuna. It's, it's written in Shiva Maharaj's latest book, Vilaja Kusu Manjali. He includes it in the process of the devotional service. It's a dialogue between Krishna and Arjuna. Thank you, Maharaj. May I ask one more? Um, Maharaj, so yeah, if a follow up of this offense. Yes, please uh, go ahead. Please. Offended and then um, small scale, large scale. And then, Maharaj, um, so we are of, uh, talking about like offending other person, like a second devotee. But what if we, off uh, like daily basis, if I'm offending my own self, let's say that, okay, I may make an offense 
I did not, but I'm saying if I make an offense, let's say I, I broke a regulatory principle, I drank coffee. That's an offense to my own self, right? So, um, so now I am the offender and I am offended. So, so how to, what to do in such a situation? Because this can lead to a cycle of self-flagellation and self-judgment and then one feels stuck for a long time. Yes, theoretically, uh, it's a, because it's a theory for uh, the level of Krishna consciousness that I may be in that, okay, holy name is very powerful. Or if I have faith in uh, you, my spiritual master, but still there is this feeling of being stuck in, in uh, the cycle of the self-flagellation. Uh, so, because same person is offender, same person is offended. There's somebody who's unmuted. I don't know, so that's, yeah. that's just false ego. That's all that is. That's. Yeah, I just muted them. Go ahead. You, Sorry. You think you, you think you're so perfect, and then when you make a mistake, you can't un, you can't you can't accept the fact that you made a mistake, and so you beat yourself to death. So you have some pride in there that you're so great and all of a sudden when Krishna shows you by uh, by this fall down that you're not so great. So what you do is apologize to yourself, get back up, stop it. And if you can't stop it, get some help to stop it. Never ever would have I've ever thought that this is false ego. Uh, thank you. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> there are people who say, "Oh, I'm so wretched. I'm so fallen. I'm so useless." This is false ego, because the body and mind may also. One, one is looking for pity from outside or wants to feel sorry for themselves. That's all. The Krishna consciousness can pick you back up as soon as you fall down. Just get back up. That's all. Baba said, third class to fall down, first class to get up. Maharaj, uh, isn't that consciousness, you know, oh, I'm so fallen, I'm so conditioned, I'm so this, I'm so that. Isn't this, is, isn't that also like the um, the uh, playing the victim kind of a thing? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the soul is pure. You're not the body or the mind. But Maharaj, in... So we, we are asked to feel, I mean, we are, I'm, this is like, I'm just speaking, I, I'm sorry if I'm not putting my question properly, but then we are, uh, we are like asked by the scriptures, by the Guru Sadhu Shastra principle to not to feel as, uh, or not to propagate ourselves so high. Uh, and then when the person is really feeling uh, like that, then we say, oh, you're, you're in false ego. When you're thinking you're so great? No, when you're thinking that you're so fallen that you couldn't even keep up with the uh, pro with the principles that you promised, like you drank this cup of coffee over the principle that you did. I didn't drink it, Maharaj. I'm just asking. <laughs> no, I know. I know, no, I'm, I, I, I know you're just presenting a, a, you know, a case. I understand that. So, all right, you make a mistake. Realize what caused you to make a mistake. You attached the coffee for whatever reason. Or, you know, you were sleepy one day and you thought, I can't wake up, so I'll have some coffee. So you made a mistake. Oh, you realize you made a mistake. You say, oh, look at me. I'm a, what, a, what a fool I made. All right, let me get back up. No more coffee. Don't stay down. Get up again. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, Very much. nice question that cleared a lot of devotees' thoughts too. Thank you, Prem Kishori. Yes, Prakshit, go ahead. We can learn from our mistakes, but don't, you know, don't wallow in, the, in, in you know, pity for yourself. You know? That's all. Prakshit, for a little.
Here we you go. go to Hare Krishna. Yeah, yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept the humble obeisances of Sishila Prabhupada. So when Prem Krishna was asking a question about drinking coffee basically violating the intoxication part of it, um, my mind was not clear about a part that she mentioned says, I am the offender and also the offended. I can see, and correct me if I'm wrong, that's why I'm asking the question. If a person drank the coffee, then they are the offender. But isn't the offended that isn't it that they've actually disobeyed the instruction given by the spiritual master by drinking that? Therefore, actually, the instruction has been violated. So they cannot be the offended person. They are the offender still, but the instructions have been violated. That came from a guru. That's what my mind was processing it. So that's why I wanted you to comment on it, Hare Krishna. Yeah, they are not, they are the, they've committed an offense by not following the proper instructions. Yeah. And so, but they're not, they're the offender. They are not the <laughs> offender. They are, they are the offender. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. But you might also say that you have offended you, yourself in the form of your soul. Your body, mind, has committed an offense against you. <laughs> so you can look at it from that angle too. You're the soul, not the body and mind. The body and mind is the one that wanted the coffee and drank it. The soul didn't. Thank you, Hans, for explaining the part. Any other last minute questions? Just, it's such a wonderful topic, such a deep topic. Marge, I have a question, if that's okay with you, Marge. I hope I'm not taking too much of your time because this is such a deep topic. <laughs> <I'm> Marge, <here. laughs> thank you, Marge. Marge, I, I come across situations where um, because you mentioned and in, in one of your points, and I made a note of it, uh, you um, when one offends a Vaishnava, one should ask for forgiveness to the Vaishnava and ready to offer service to the Vaishnava. Somehow, Marge, um, it's a challenge I, I come across for some people to say, I'm sorry. Like that word, it's so heavy in their tongue. How can we really develop, you know, that um, hmm, that attitude of saying I'm sorry? Like, like what blocks that, Marge? Like, you know, it's like they know they've done wrong, but just to say I'm sorry, it just doesn't come out. Well, they feel themselves vulnerable if they say that. But it's actually a principle of humility. I made a mistake. I caused you some. See, the, the repentance is based on that. Not so much that I'm going to get a reaction for what I did, but the repentance is based on the fact that I caused you some distress by what I did or said. And that has to be the focus. And then when you say you're sorry, it's natural. Then you are sorry. But if you're saying you're sorry based on the fact that what's going to happen to me, then you're not fully repentant. <laughs> Indra, when Indra tried to make repentance to Krishna for, you know, trying to destroy the inhabitants of Vindavan by sending Turan to rain, it's a mention, and uh, Shiva Ram Maharaj makes that point in his in one of his books, where Indra was following behind, following along with Krishna and trying to talk to him. Krishna wouldn't talk to him. Because, because he wasn't fully repented. He was wanted, he simply wanted to get relief from his wrong activity because he was afraid of, you know, getting a reaction. Only when he came to the point of being so sincerely sorry for what he did, then, then Krishna forgave him. And he couldn't even do that until Brahma came in and told him, you know, get Sarabi cow and present Sarabi 
to Krishna, then Krishna will forgive you. So that's that's real repentance to be really sorry for the inconvenience, the distress, or the harm that I caused to the person. That's 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 retribution, not oh oh no, what's going to happen to me? Thank you so much, Mars. That 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 really helped. Thank you so much. Such a deep topic. Such a, so nice questions. Would like to ask devotees if you have any other questions, anything that's coming in your mind, clarification that you need, you know, doubts that you need to get clarified, anything that's really on your mind. Yes, Sri Devi, I could see by your face, Mataji. Go right ahead, shoot it. <laughs> I'm just uh, thinking so much. This topic is so important because of Vaishnava Aparad. So I just ask this question. Uh, dear Guru Maharaj, supposing we are offended, we ourselves are feeling offended by someone's behavior, their speech or their words or their attitude, something. But the other person doesn't even know that we are offended. Hmm? So how should we work on ourselves so that we are not carrying the pain and, uh, you know, that resentment and anger and hurt and things like that? How can we, even without the other person apologizing or even coming to know, how can we just shed that burden for our own peace of mind? Well, you may, you may not do something immediately when it happens, but after a while you think, Oh, why should I be, why should I carry negativity towards that person? I made a mistake, it doesn't matter. It depends on the severity of the offense. If they tried to kill you and they were unsuccessful, then you should tell them. <laughs> the next time you try that, it's not going to, you know, it's going to be a different. But if it's something like they said something that was disturbing, you might have to just dismiss it. Yes, yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, thank you. Um, let's see. Vityananda was not at all offended. Even when Jagai and Marai were, you know, blaspheming him, chasing him, even when they threw the pot. It hit him in the head. He was not offended in any of those. He was just thinking, well, we're, we're trying to save these conditioned souls and give them the mercy of the Lord. Maharaj, um, is that, can I share something from Bhakti Mark Swami that he helped me get over? Bhakti Mark Swami? Yes. Is, is that okay? I want to get permission. He wrote something? No, Maharaj. Um, uh, when just remembering Sri Devi's question of we feeling offended, I went through that, I think, about 10, 15 years ago. And, and um, uh, I was offended. The other person knew that they have offended me, but they didn't think anything about it. And I was carrying that pain in my heart. And uh, Bhakti Mark Swami at that time visited us, stayed with us. And, the, and he gave me the best advice. He said to me, Anasuya, pray to Lord Narsingadev. And when you pray to him, pray so earnestly that you want that pain to be removed and imagine him ripping your mind, is what he said, with his claws, just as the way he ripped Hiranyakasipu. And you keep making that prayer and you will see that it really works to lighten that load. Did you do that? I did it for 18 months, Maharaj, and it worked. It took 18 months, huh? I was that bad. I was very bad. <laughs> I was very knucklehead hard, Maharaj. <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> I'm being honest. But it worked. But I was so hard. I had it took me that long to get over the crap. <laughs> Yeah, it says that uh, 
Um, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, Maraj. Yes. Yeah, I just, uh, it says, yeah, you know, when, when someone is close to you, when they offend you, that's very painful. And it was someone close, and that's why it took so <laughs> long. Yeah, and even the scriptures say it's very painful. We have yeah. to continue somehow. Yes, Mars, that was really one painful experience, but I'm so glad that Bhakti Mark Swami came and saved me from that burden. And that really, really, really helped. It really, really helped. And I, yeah, I wanted to share that little experience. Any other questions? Yes, Mars, I'm sorry. No, I'm just going to say, uh, running close to this, you uh, have a little bit of a schedule coming up. Okay, Marge. Um, Marge, I uh, Ravati asked if she could ask a question, but it depends on your time, Marge. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ravati, go right ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mataji. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. I have a question about uh, uh, in the beginning of the class, you mentioned uh, anarthas uh, coming out of pious and impious. Could you please explain about Anathas coming out of fires? Like how should we understand the... Well, that's a whole subject matter. Are you coming to the retreat in, uh, in America? Yes, sir. yes, I, we are I'll, coming. I'll, speak, I'll be speaking about that. <laughs> okay, sure. There, I, can just, I can't really explain all this for them. Uh, uh, Let's see, pious activities due to, um, uh, let's see, anarthas due to pious activities are desires for heavenly planets, desires for mystic power, desire for liberation, and ultimately desires for sense gratification, authorized sense gratification. So these are the four, and each one requires um, explanation. So we have to look at our sense gratification. So what kind of sense gratifications we have? So yeah, because yeah. Uh, maybe charity also, Guru Maharaj. Like when we do charity, also we try to uh, do like you know looking for a benefit or something, uh, even though it's like a pious. That is also yeah. another. That's not that's not an anarchy if you're looking for some benefit. It's just it's not pure devotional service. Mm -hmm. so devotional service. Okay, good Thank much. You I so look much. for the retreat. Yeah. And I have one more question here, Marge, if it's okay, can I ask? <laughs> <laughs> Marsh, you got us started, Mar. So now you're having the ball rolling. <laughs> yeah. Like two meetings coming up plus lunch. So I have to rush here. Okay. okay so. no problem. I can ask tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for, so much, Marge. For tomorrow. Okay. Sure. Thank, thank you, you so much. much, Marge. And we thank the devotees for joining us, Marge. I won't ask if, about the chanting because I know you have two meetings and lunch. So please forgive us, Maharaj. <laughs> please forgive us for taking your time and your lunchtime and everything, Maharaj. Please forgive us. It is such a nice topic. Thank you to Father Dave well, for joining the, us. The point is, I, 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 if I had a choice, I would stay with you. <laughs> I have a in your association, I think it's a very important discussion that we're making. Also, one of the most important, but at the same time. I got people coming soon to, and I have to spend some time. So. Yeah, completely fine, March. And we thank the devotees for joining us. Vansha Krapati Biascha, Kripa Sandha Vevacha, Patita Nampavanebhyo, Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha, Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. His Holiness Chandramani Swami Ki Jai. Hari 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 Hari.